Texas professor of physics, Clay Inman, to talk us through the physics of roller coasters. All right. Woo. See you guys. Climbing up the first hill, the chain provides energy, doing work, moving the car to the top right. of the first hill. We're going to have a tremendous amount of, first of, uh, the chain of the law of Moving conservation of energy the says this. The, the total energy of the system must of, uh, remain constant. Potential energy is lost as the car goes down the hill and loses height. But whatever potential energy is lost is gained as kinetic and vice versa. The kinetic energy he's talking about is speed and lots of we took a calculator and our diagrams underneath the coaster to figure out Now say this hill is 82 feet from top to bottom. Double that number. Now multiply by acceleration due to gravity. Here on Earth, it's just a constant 32.2 feet per second squared. Take the square root, feet per second and square. there's your peak velocity, 49.5 miles per hour. But since we're losing energy Take to friction and wind resistance, and the final speed is 48.5 miles per right. hour. Our special camera also measures our speed to check our work. Over 48 miles per hour, only falling short of the 49.5 miles per hour that we calculated by one mile per hour. And that's due to a little bit of energy lost to friction, which brings up the next part of the problem. How are we going to make it through the loop? With gritted teeth. To make it through the loop, we must overcome our weight. Gravitational force that's trying to pull it down, and the centripetal force should be the same. As long as there's a, the same, then the car will not come off the track. Now this is the toughest part. Car speed multiplied by itself divided by the tightness of the loop, the or radius part. of curvature, Correct. as long as this is higher than the gravity downward, we're going to make it through the loop. Roller coaster designers do this by either increasing the speed into the loop, or just tightening the loop. Apparently they had enough kinetic energy. But this centripetal acceleration has another side effect. G-forces. Tight turns change the car's direction. This causes riders to feel like they're being pulled in the opposite direction or toward the track. That force you feel could be twice that of gravity or three times that of gravity. 3G. So if you're a 150-pound person, all of a sudden it feels at least that you weigh 450 pounds. Ride designers tend not to go much above 6G, as it increases the chance a rider could lose consciousness. This map shows all the points on the ride where the G-force is greater than 1 in blue. In other words, where the force pulling you down toward the seat is greater than what you'd normally feel just sitting in a chair. In orange, the opposite. The force pulling you upward, out of your seat, like weightlessness. That's the exciting thing about a roller coaster, that you have all these forces acting on you in random directions with random sizes, and we find that really it could be dangerous. All from the relatively simple notion of using the force of gravity. Rolling a car up a hill, letting it coast to the bottom. That's the name of the ride. It's a roller coaster. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Just a few feet from that roller coaster, another ride you could fall for. The drop, carefully calculated, and everything up to the wind monitored for your safe passage. Another ride you could fall for. The drop, carefully calculated, and everything up to the wind Believe it or not, this was not the scariest part of my day. Before our dive on this thrill ride, we had to make sure it was Believe safe to jump in. The sky coaster is like a giant swing. As the rider swings back and forth, the winds could push them off center. 30 mile per hour sustained wind. The winds need to be less than that. This thrill ride is just a simple pendulum. From the drop, it's just more than four seconds to the bottom. Then a swing right back up the other side. Now, statistically speaking, free falling thrill rides like this are actually safer than the drive to the theme park as long as you manage the risk. Now, it's really important that we measure the winds to make sure the ride operates safely. So, Jay Boggs and I are going to climb to the top 
and install an anemometer, which does what? Uh, measures the wind speed. A 30 mile per hour wind could swing riders unsafely on a crooked dive. Now an anemometer can gauge that, so we harness up to deliver one to the top. So essentially it's like climbing a ladder, just 30 of them, one after another. Our safety depends on this, the wire rope that can hold almost 10,000 pounds. We're clipped to it using two clips. Jay Boggs climbs this tower weekly, claiming 500 trips to the top so far. Looking up, this is no big deal. But when you do look down, all of a sudden you start thinking, whoa. Over the years, I estimate Jay climbed 30 miles, both up and down. There he is, the chief climbing officer. Right up there. <laughs> He's going to make sure we stay safe. We approach the most harrowing part of our journey. Don't look down, right? <laughs> Any, <laughs> anyway, somehow we have to climb around this pole. Don't look down, right? At the very top, we have to unclip. Take one of these clips off. Ah, uh, okay. And step around. Move this clip to the next step. Okay. And then you can take this. You're going to leave this sliding sleeve here. 300 feet above the ground. This is crazy. <laughs> to reach the platform. You're going to leave this sliding sleeve. Don't look down. Three where a broken wind gauge sits, immobile, damaged, once by Hurricane Irma, and again by another round of strong winds. We've hauled the replacement up here. And we just snap the anemometer into place here. You bring it all the way down, just like that. Here's how it works. Passing wind catches one of the three cups, causing the shaft to spin. The anemometer counts the number of spins the shaft takes in a set time to calculate the wind speed. Our wind speed, 17 miles per hour up the east, 300 feet up doing maintenance on the sky tower at fun spot. We can actually feel the tower swaying in the wind. So now that it works, just a quick climb down. The only thing left is to go back up one more time with our producer. Not climbing this time, but going in style to take the dive. Want to see all 20 vertigo-inducing? Don't look down, right? <laughs> Stomach turning. Want to see all 20 vertigo There we go. Okay, we're okay, right? Hair-raising minutes of the 300-foot climb up the Sky Coaster? Then climb onto WFTV.com slash Science of Florida. Scroll down, click on the link that says Raw Video, 300-foot climb up Sky Coaster, grab your safety harness and popcorn, and enjoy. Up next, two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis. Shoulders of the space shuttle, America will continue the dream. We'll show you something so big, <laughs> look at that, it could only be launched in Florida. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. It could only be launched in Florida. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now, I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us, too. So we're like aliens? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. What do you have for us, ad man? More like ad baby. This is how we're going to show America that Blackish is on five nights a week. Let's show them how I'm crushing the mom gig. How was school today? The funniest thing happened. Oh. Well, children know something special. Show your parenting expertise. Or how you're such a loving son to your mother. Great idea, Scott. We're so good at that. Weeknights at 6 on TV 27. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form. Entertainment in every variety. And thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because it's 
until you get to really know this place, thank you, this community, to know about and see all the reasons why it's so magical. Rest assured, you don't know the half of it. This community, to know about and see all. We're on to you, corruption. Government waste. Your time is up. And all you scams and ripoffs out there, your days are numbered because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Proportional to acceleration. Roger roll, Atlanta. While watching this rocket launch, you experienced Newton's three laws of motion, basic concepts allowing us to achieve the impossible. But how do you build the impossible? This is the second largest building by volume in the world, and the largest building that I'm, I've ever been in personally, and a very impressive building. First, you're going to need a big building. But as we walk in, you can really see just how huge it is. Yeah, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It really does. I can't even see the top yet. A really, really big building. It's about 500 feet. NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building. It's like a garage, but big enough for rockets. Rocket science. Those little dots in the doorway, that's NASA physicist Doug Willard about to show me that this building is so big, Four rockets, rockets could technically be assembled That's inside NASA. at once. This is High Bay 3. Okay. There are four bays in the, in the VAB. This is the third of, of, the, of the four. So one, two, three, and four. The next rocket to be assembled in this bay is the SLS, or Space Launch System. It's NASA's next and most powerful rocket yet. And this is what it will look like. So massive it will arrive in sections to be put together here, like this. Made up of boosters, and this engines, tanks, so massive, arrived by plane, boat, or automobile like from this. various sites across the country. In these platforms, and as high as you can see arrived in the building, plane, boat, okay. and uh, that those platforms gave, the uh, give access to the the workers when they're where they're assembling, putting the checking out, and, and uh, making sure that the rocket is, is put together correctly. So up we go. This is High Bay 3, one of the four bays where rockets can be assembled within the vehicle assembly building. We're about to get off on the 16th floor so we can get an aerial view of where the SLS will be constructed. There's the two booster holes on the right and the left, okay. and then the center hole is for the, the main first stage, or the core stage. When complete, this rocket will stand taller than the Statue of Liberty, right through the top of these platforms. I haven't been up here in a really long time. Oh, the building? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. You can see the launch pads over there. And the ocean. Yeah. We're also near the very top of the building, which has these large yellow cranes that pick up and operate uh, and uh, process all of the different rocket segments. In the world of cranes, this is an impressive crane. It's the tool that's used to lift the boosters vertically before assembling the rocket. 
The crane can lift 250 tons and it can do so with an accuracy of five thousandths of an inch. It's said that they can manipulate this crane hook to touch the top of an egg without breaking it. And it has to be this precise. A misplaced segment could ruin the entire rocket. Pure power, enough to launch into orbit. So, what exactly is orbit? If I'm on the top of a tower and I was to throw a ball, it's going, the ball's going to go out at a certain velocity and it's going to come down in an arc and it hit the ground. If you throw it faster, the arc gets longer, but the ball still hits the ground. But what if I could take that ball and throw it fast enough? It would fall in such a way that it would follow the curvature of the Earth. It would continuously fall. And if you threw it...